Yo, it's crazy that you just walked down here. I am having such a hard time recording this video. Why? Because, like, I know what to say, but I, at the same time, I don't know what to say. Like, I don't know how to put it together. Well, I'm here to support you. All right, look. I'll, I'll play the video for you. So, this was the video I had reacted to. And then, like, I kind of... Oh, Lord, no waterworks? Yeah, yeah, I, you know, I wasn't trying to start crying and shit, so... Alright. It's hot down here, huh? It's not hot down here, babe. It is not hot down here. Please don't come down here with none of that. Alright, look, just look at the video. Look at the video. Okay, okay. I have just come to the point to realize that people are not going to include me. No matter how nice I am, no matter how good of a friend I am, no matter how much I support people, no matter how much I love people with all my heart, people do not think about me. People do not care to invite me. People do not want me around them. And for the life of me, I can't understand why. So, I'm going to stay, take a step back from people and from the world to figure it out. Because no matter how hard I try to be there for people, they're always going to not try hard for me. And no, mm. I did not have to make this video. No, I did not have to announce that I was taking a break. But I wanted to, and I felt like it, and I needed to express myself. Sometimes it's really hard for me to express my emotions, but when I do, I have to, or it's going to bother me. And I'd rather me not be bothered than to bother y'all. So, um, yeah. I have just come to the... Don't, don't, don't listen. This is why. Um, <laughs> this is this is why I'm having a hard time doing this video. Because you can relate. This young lady yeah. has single-handedly described how I've been feeling my whole life. Y'all care too much. Holy shit! Hold on. <laughs> Hold on. Wait a minute. Oh snap! Son, how many times have we had conversations about stuff like this? How many times? So many times. Come sit on daddy lap. So many times. Come sit on daddy lap. Maybe I can really like open, pause. I was finna say open up, but pause. It's what's wrong with open it up. You gotta spread your legs open to receive me, right? Oh. It's, I feel as though everybody have a shadow that's hanging over them that they want to get rid of. And that's my shadow. That is literally my shadow. Feeling as though I've done way too much for people. For the way they treat me in return. Because it's not... If it was... I don't... I'm not... I'm saying this with love. I really am saying this with love. Okay, I'm not going to say it. No, say it. Go ahead. Why do you look it. so defeated? Then just say it. Say what you're about to say. I just feel like... You know I feel like everything is energy, Right? Okay. I just feel like sometimes I feel like giving from a place of like happiness and joy is different from giving from a place of like once I give this to you, you'll see my my worth and you'll accept me. It went from me giving from a place of just giving to that. That's all I'm saying. Like, but but I'm saying like over time it changed into that. And I'm not disagreeing. I'm definitely not disagreeing with you because I, I have definitely found myself doing things for people to see how they would reciprocate. I've found myself doing that. But I'm telling you, before it got to that, I would think about other people first. Right. And I've I, always been that person. Like I've that's, always that's just thought about other people that's first. That's an opportunity for you to be more selfish. Like, honestly, I think in the world we live in, you know, selfish has like a bad um, connotation around it, a bad energy, a, a bad term. So maybe if you say, sometimes I think about the difference between self-centered and selfish, right? And 
I feel like I think it's okay to like be self-centered in the terms of like you center yourself. You are one with how you're feeling. You come back to center in that regard because you can be more aware of when you're giving, your giving is not coming from a place of joy anymore. That's when you pull back. Like she said she was going to do, I think she should do that because she's depleted herself. It's yeah. time for her to pour back into herself and realize how much value that she brings just from being who she is as a person. There are people out there that will value her, invite her, and want her to be a part just for what she brings. Also, the things that she said, she's perpetuating that. You know, people don't do this. People, that's how her experience in the past has been. That doesn't determine her future. You know, she can say, I've experienced that. But the more she speaks that into existence, the more it's going to repeat itself. And it's going to be her present and her future. She has to change her terminology. But it don't have to be forced. But it's just like, I hope the time that she takes to pour back into herself, she will see that that's the past. don't have to be her present. And how she actually contributed to those, to the way people treated her. People yeah. can People can sense... Pick me, pick me, see me, see yeah. me energy. And Bro, it, it repels yeah. them. If, you, if you're if around somebody who think they the shit, that stands in like, yo, I'm centered in self. I do the work to make sure that I'm centered in my emotions and I'm good. And you constantly have somebody that's just like, it's like an energy vampire. They don't see it like they sucking up your energy. But by them being on this frequency and they looking for other people who think just as highly as themselves and you thinking lower of yourself, it's, you, it's like you forcing them. You want them to come down and see you. But what they could do is they could pull back, get their energy, yeah. and the more energy that they pull, it'll rise them higher. And then they'll be on the same level. And it's like, oh, yeah, girl, I see you come. The reason, maybe the reason why they're not inviting her places is because it's like, I don't know what it is, but it's just something off. Like, mm, you know what I'm saying? It's yeah. like, mm, mm. no, you yeah. a star. Bring the star energy. Bring that. And if we all get depleted, life be life in. That's why it's like, be unapologetic about, like, I wouldn't have said shit. I'd be like, listen, you're going to find out the hard way. You reach out to me, I'm going to respond back to you. You're going to know, but not on no resentful shit, but it's just like, I need a minute. I need a break. I'm taking it because it's too much, you know? Even like, you know, sometimes when you say, I always speak back life into you, like, you're worthy. If they don't see it, that's on them. That's their loss. You bring so much by just being you. Fuck them. You don't, and you don't want to accept me. You don't want to be in my circle. You don't even know... Not even who I'm connected to, but like you don't even know the vibe. And if this vibe is not for you, good. Catch I mean, up on somewhere though, else. I feel as though I'm getting better at just, you know, noticing certain things. Cause before, bro, I always been on some all right, me and you gonna be cool. I'm gonna do this for you. But let's see how long before you turn on me. Let's see how long before you become a Judas. And I've gotten used to that shit. Like the stuff that happened with old boy at the job. I saw that shit coming, bro. You feel what I'm saying? And it's just like, I saw it coming. I ignored it. And then when it finally happened, it, I felt I felt betrayed. And you know what I'm saying? Like, I I felt betrayed. Like, I betrayed myself, too. Because certain, I was willing to, just things I was willing to step to and willing to do. But I'm glad it didn't happen. You feel what I'm saying? And even with, I think, like, the perfect example Cause I gotta give an example. I gotta tell some type of story. The perfect example would be when me and Brandon had that song. So, all right, let me explain this. And I want to say this too, bro. Out of all the people that I've, I've ever came across that I've done things for, I want to say like Brandon and Greg have like really been that energy that you're talking about. I fuck with Brandon and Greg. The job I work at right now. Because my boy Bimo got it for me. My boy Bimo looked out for me. He was like, hey, cuz. Hey, cuz. Just, I just had that interview, cuz. I just got that job. I know they're going to hire you too, cuz. Next week, I got hired. So anyway. Big Gemini energy. You feel me? So anyway, so me and Bimo, we used to do music, right? And one day I'm at his crib and we come up with this song. So my verse ended up being the chorus. And he was like, you should, you should, you should sing it. You should sing. I'm like, nah, nigga, you can sing. You sing the chorus. So he sang it, came up with a song called OT. Um, I think I feel as if a few people subscribed to me have You gonna plug it in? No, because I'm gonna get to that. 
Oh. I'm, I'm gonna get to why we don't oh, play the song yeah, anymore. Yeah, yeah, I remember. Okay. So anyway, so the song actually like started getting some traction, and we had like a it was his manager. You feel what I'm saying? And she started doing iffy shit. So when when you got to do your spreadsheet for the song, you have to this person get this percentage, this person get this percentage, the person that make the beat, they get this percentage. The dude who made the beat sold his rights. Like he didn't want nothing. So now the whole thing just belonged to me and Bimo. Bimo told her like, hey, when you do the spreadsheet, it's 50-50. Make sure you know it's 50-50. Make sure you put it as 50-50. Now, where my mistake was, I should have just done... I should have just done the, you know, the stuff myself. But I wasn't familiar with it. And I'm thinking, all right, well, you know, like, he explained it to her. And she know how the song came about. I'm checking the spreadsheet, bro. She did it. I got 25%. And then uh, my boy, Bimo, got 25%. And then she, the... And uh, uh, Overdose Entertainment got 50%. Now, Overdose Entertainment, that would be be more on her. So, like, I called him. I'm like, hey, bro, you looked at the spreadsheet? Like, that should look iffy. So, now, I'm, he is like, yeah, why the fuck she gave me and my company 75% and she only gave you 25% when I told her it's going to be 50-50? I'm like, bro, you're going to have to talk to her. He gets on the phone. We talk, and she like, oh, but you, you didn't have a publishing company. So, my thing is... You spoke to me when you wanted some advice on YouTube. So why couldn't you tell me I needed to get a publishing company? Mm -hmm. We had a conversations. Mm -hmm. So finally, I start, I did a publishing company. So now I got my 50. He got his 50. And then as time progressed, like little shit, we had a show. She put everybody on the fly except for me. And that started, you know, my PTSD about people just not including me. No matter if I contributed, you still try to... Not include me in the shit. Like, you try to make me not a part of the shit. We had some type of promotion that was going to happen with, um... At the time, they had this little white boy that was doing a little dance. I think the, the backpack kid. She sent the stuff to him to get promoted. Everybody's fucking Instagram handle was correct except for mine's. I literally watched everybody who... Had nothing to do with the song... I watched their their following just grow and mine stay the same because of a simple typo. And ain't no way you're going to tell me you did that typo by accident. Bro, that's it. So I feel like from that, you know, that's an opportunity for you to learn how to be like, to use your voice more and become more diligent with certain things. No, I mean, I definitely, I definitely use my voice, but you know, to an extent, I feel as though like sometimes I do feel bad because like you know she don't really fuck with Bimo like that no more, and I do feel as though me like calling her out about a lot of that stuff might have been okay. But I'm, it's only gonna be a matter of time, possibly, before she tried to do some shit over with Brandon, or even if she ain't tried to do something slick with Brandon. The collaborations that they might have done in the future, if she's always like trying to cut corners with the people they collaborate with, that'd it was gonna in, come. That'd put him in, in a bad situation. It would have put him in a bad situation. Also, would have cut ties. You know what I'm saying? She would have burnt bridges. Like, what if she did that with a person that actually would have kept their foot on her fucking neck? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, it was gonna come to this anyway because of the way she operates. She don't operate in integrity. So I'm saying yeah. it's like once you're aware of something. Be unapologetic about the move you're gonna take because you you had so many experiences in the past about it. About people just doing so like when, ass you shit, was, so bro. when you saw like with your coworker and it was gonna take that turn, the, the little things he showed you at that point it's like oh yeah that I felt bro, this that, before let me bro, let me pull back because I already know how this is going. That end. was some just Judas ass shit, bro. Like right? I don't know, I don't know if it was jealousy. I don't know what, but I felt so crazy. Cause you remember he used to cook, and he was talking about, oh, I wanna, I wanna start a food truck. It's a guy in the um that we I play ball with. He's a, a chef. He's like one of the top chefs. He got he working in a restaurant in Buckhead, but on the side he does a food truck. I was finna try to put a play together. 
And then this shit happened. And in my mind, I'm like, bro, how could you? Oh, man, bro. Like, that's just. It's a same thing about. It's this book called The Body Keep the Score, right? And it's, yeah. it's like basically when you addicted to a certain thing, like that's what your body's used to. Also, I'm addicted to just being betrayed. In a sense. And it takes active work for you to like break up out of that cycle. Oh, shit. It's crazy because it's like our body gets so used to like comfort. Even if the comfort is detrimental to our growth, yeah. is what we used to. Damn, I ain't never thought so, of that. So I'm like, being self-centered is just like being self-aware. Like, come back to like, what's right in front of you? How are you feeling? Have you experienced this before? And then make a conscious decision on how you want to handle it. Like, you can still move with an open heart. It's not about being like, guarded, I don't trust anybody. But yeah. it's like, it's trusting yourself enough to know that you will make the right decision, that you are aware of what's in front of you, to always come back home to what is, and then choose from there. Yeah. Choose, like, how you want it to be. Like, I'm in my therapist, one of our first sessions, she said, you always have a choice. Like, your superpower is your choice. That is your superpower, and we always have a choice. That's just, like, I think <laughs> we have different, even dopamine hits, you know what I'm saying? Like, it was this class I was thinking about taking. I was like, man, you always take another class. You better not take not near another class. And it was, it was like, yeah, you would discover it a week before it's about to start, which is giving me like a short window to make a decision. And I was like, I always just hop on it. Like, it's an opportunity, yes. I said, try to do something different just this one time. Simply because you always hop in on stuff. You get that dopamine hit. You get the information. Then what you do with it? Nothing. Exactly. Not a damn thing. That's, that's, mm. Mm. I ain't, I was so lost in my thought just now. I just, I just realized, yeah, you always in somebody's class. You always signing up for some shit. Right, and that's, this is what I'll be telling my husband about, like, how the same feeling that you have can show up in different ways. Like, I have the feeling sometimes about, like, you know, people, they don't, I can't trust people. They're fickle. But that, ter- that shows up in hyper-independence. So I'm always taking the class. So I could always be self-sufficient. I don't have to depend on nobody. I'm going to get mine regardless. Not only I'm going to put you down and get it, but it's just like, I don't expect you to do shit for me. If you do something, that's great. I'm so happy. Thank you. But if you don't, I could really care less. I have nothing to prove to you. Now, people that I do think I have a tendency to be like, if I if you where I want to be, then I feel like I'm, I owe you because I want to learn from you. So I'm going to bring even more of myself to the table than I normally would. But, like, I don't feel guilty. I feel like that's the requirement. You know what I'm saying? I'm coming with something. We're going to do an exchange. But, like, I don't look at it like you use me or this, that, and the third because people who see the value in me, it's like, okay, what value are you, you know, where, where's the exchange? Even if it's just energetic. You don't have to be the same thing. But I got to feel joint happiness from what you bring and then what I give. So we can just flow in that. If it's not there, it's almost like I get hives. My body, like, I cannot be in that environment for too long. Even, like, listening to her, like, I have to consciously open my heart and listen with love. Because, like, that's being around, just listen to that. If she was around a group of people and she was just, woe is me, talking like that all the goddamn time, I would not be talking. She would not get a phone call from me. That's You have a therapist for that. And then you could come back and then talk about, you know what I'm saying, things that's in alignment. But nobody wants to hear that all the time. Everybody got shit going on. You got to put that in the proper place. But back to my point, I'm saying like, sometimes, sometimes, you, need, sometimes you need somebody to listen. That's why they have therapists. You don't know what other people are going through. And it also, it's, it's like you tell me to read the room. It's like... Why don't you find somebody else that feel the same way you feel? So y'all both could do that together. It's never like that. But my point is the same way you may feel like, oh, people always, they don't, um, they get jealous, they leave this, that, and the third, and it make you angry. It can make somebody else, up, um, like, it make you kind of sad. It can make somebody else angry. And they use that anger to fuel their success. You get what I'm saying? 
it's the it's the Case same in point what I'm doing here. It's in a way, but it's just like I don't like that shit right there. I felt like that. You think I give a fuck? I'm sorry. Maybe I should have clarified. I don't really care now. Like, I literally just do my YouTube. I'm not saying but you can't. I, I did, hold on. Let me say something, too. Let me just say this. Right? I'm not super religious, but I, I feel as though, you know, you have made me on my spiritual woke stuff. I don't think anybody who has ever did some Judas shit to me, I feel as though... Karma, karma is crazy. I think that's the best way I could put it. Karma is crazy. So, what's I expect? I be feeling, I don't want people to do Judah stuff to me because I feel as though karma always come back to get them. Karma works both ways. Like I don't be doing shit for karma to come back to get But I'm saying, if you don't learn a lesson, karma's going to come back to you. What Just you like mean? the same way you've had different scenarios in which you felt betrayed, that's, yeah. that's karma too. It's not just like, oh, that person did bad to me, so bad going to get done to them. It's like, you didn't stand up for yourself the way you should have, so I'm going to give you another situation where you need to stand up for yourself. And until you learn how to stand up for yourself, you're going to keep on getting in situations where you feel helpless until you empower yourself. Same thing with me. Like, I have to be put in situations where I have to empower myself. I'm going through that right now, but it's just like, that's what I'm saying, this whole like, nobody's better than the other person. We all come in each other's life for a lesson to be learned. And until we learn that lesson, we're going to repeat that same lesson. Just because someone did this to you doesn't mean, like, now it's on them. Like, venge. That's what I'm saying. Like, sometimes, too, we have a habit of looking for the wrong so you can find the right in it. What if there's no right or there's just a lesson to be learned and you take it for what the lesson is and not, like, I have you. I told you you a Libra, so you have you look for justice. You look for the injustice so you can find the justice in and a certain thing. Goddamn Batman. Jim and I, not to get, but like, we just don't give a shit. Like, we, we, it's a duality. We see everything from this side, that side, upside, downside, all the fucking sides, which is why it's hard for us to make a decision sometimes, unless it's like a, hell yeah, this is it. I feel it in my body. But it's just like, sometimes it's good to have different perspectives on the same situation, the same scenario. So it brought in like your horizon. Like, I feel like, I brought in your horizons with certain things and you narrow minds in with certain things. Like when things need to be narrow, you like this black and white, no gray right now. This is what it is. And then when you feel like this person is wrong, they wrong me. This is, this is not right. I'm like, well, did you think about it like this? Maybe it really wasn't towards you. Maybe yeah. they had a heart. You know what I'm saying? No, that's a fact. And I feel like it's kind of, it's kind of that's examples. how we balance each other out yeah, in our relationship. It's countless kind of examples of that. Anyway, what Oh, we've been talking for twenty four minutes. I I ain't even gonna put. I ain't even gonna monetize this video. I'm just let that let it play. I don't even think I'm gonna edit it. What? What? Why you not gonna monetize it? Cause somebody might need to hear this, and we've been cursing and stuff like that. I said fuck one, two times. No, we've been cursing. No, we have not. Your mouth like a sailor. Both our mouths like sailors that we don't even know we be cursing. When I be having to edit them videos after me and you get on there, you know me I mean? I be having to cut five, ten minutes worth of just cursing. Let me, you know what I was thinking about oh, God. today, too? You so damn long-winded. Jesus no, Christ. it's just like, when you said, like, monetizing, right? Yes. And I, I want you to know this, too, babe. It's like, you know how they have, like, the four to five different love languages? Yeah. I would say that, like, my number one love language which I know you probably not gonna agree. It's like acts of service, but I feel like I like money. I like get. I like my man give me money. I like when he take me out. But I look at all of that as an act of service because he don't have to do that. Like his time is very precious. You know, like I don't try. I try not to disturb him when he do his videos cool. or like you know turn on the AC and stuff like that. So when he does spend quality time with me, I'm appreciative. You know. Then, like, his willingness to give, to me, it's not about the money. It's about the willingness to meet my needs. Like, I cherish that. So, it's like everything that you do, I see it as an act of service because you don't have to do it. You know what I'm saying? It, it all is like act of service and all those other categories come down. Well, after this video, I hope you perform some act of service to me. Oh, yeah, that's just like what touch. That's your love language. 
Anyway, let me go ahead and um edit this so the community service can, can monetize commence. it. So you can I'm not monetizing. I'm not. I'm not monetizing this video. He's so kind. Bless his little Libra heart. Okay. Bless his little. It's not about the money. It's somebody might need to really. But they could look at it anyway, whether it's monetized or not. I just told. I'm gonna break something down to you, okay? If I don't monetize the video, YouTube is not gonna demonetize the video and not promote it. Oh, okay. It's just gonna be a video on the internet see, that's not monetized. He has such an abundant mindset. That's the mindset that I'm working on right now because yeah, I'd be like, cut the check, you know what I'm saying? I want the yeah, but I don't. But yeah. it's like he thinks so wide and so large that it always comes back to him tenfold. And I love learning that lesson of just watching him operate in his natural habitat. Keep it's that so same beautiful. Do you know yeah, that? all right. Keep that same energy fifteen minutes from now. Keep that same energy. All right, let me do my thing. Keep keep that same energy. Your mind is hot. You're not hot. No, I'm not hot. It's not hot. It's hot. You got a black dress on. Lose some of that clothes. It's not hot. I got a whole hoodie on and I'm chilling. Come on, son. Mmm.